Yeah, big show today. Uh, don't forget tonight on the E Show, Joe Piscopo and his beautiful babysitter girlfriend. You got to check her out, Kimberly. What a knockout tonight! Find out everything you want to know about Joe Piscopo and Kimberly, the babysitter who became his fiance. Watch Joe squirm as I relentlessly shower Kimberly with loving compliments. <laughs> she's always a ratings grabber, that girl. Wait till you see what she's wearing—a little cat suit. Is that called a cat suit? That thing she was wearing? I don't remember who you're talking about. Joe Piscopo's girlfriend. Kimberly. Oh, no, she had on a little uh, jumper outfit. It was pants, but they had like a high bib area and strap. And then she had like this low-cut top, and it was like mesh, and you right. could see her breasts. Yeah. yeah there was netting. There was netting. Yeah. That's guess... right. The net had caught something. Notice, I can't remember anything about this show, but I remember that. Remember what she was wearing. Super-looking girl. And by the way, uh, Mrs. Schott is here. She will be commenting on the Mark Furman tapes, right, Mrs. Schott? Yes, I will. Good morning. All right. And Mrs. Schott, uh, who owns, what do you own again? The Cincinnati Red baseball team. Right. And just you know, that. I'm the owner. Let me, let me, I've been talking to you off the air about this, and let me share it with yes. my audience, and we'll get to you in a few minutes. But Does she have her dog with her? I don't even yes. have to get my dog. You see, he's in the other room. That yeah. Baba Booey takes, took care of him for me. Come yeah, and, and she will bring the dog in in a few minutes. <laughs> but, uh,. The dog is very funny, by the way. <laughs> well, you know, the dog, the, everybody has to greet the dog when she yes. comes around. Yes, the dog bit the janitor here, by the way. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, black gentleman. Oh, dear. Anyway. Uh, train my dog. <laughs> yeah. He protects me. Mr. Schott, uh, just quickly, because yes. I know you're uh, going to get a cup of coffee, but you were accused of being a racist, and you felt wrongly accused. And I'm not a racist. That's the funny part. Right. Didn't they send you to some kind of a school? Sensitivity school? Sensitivity counseling? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Did it because work? of my feelings about Nick, I mean, the, the black people. <laughs> right. I'm not a racist. I'm really not. Right. So this is right. unfair. So you were accused of using words like nigger and kike and things like that. Like Mark Furman is being accused. What do you, just quickly, and we'll get to this. What do you make this, of all that? We'll get, what, what do you think of it? We have to give this man a chance. Right. <laughs> to do what? I don't think he's a racist. I really don't. In my heart of hearts, Robin. Yes. I don't think he's a racist. Right. And How when I had my troubles with the, the, uh, the, the colors. <laughs> right. I... I hired black people and I had them as my ball players. All right, let me ask you a few and questions. And he said a few things that I think are maybe truthful to a degree. Yeah, okay, let me ask you this. Mark Furman says, if you put a bruise on a nigger, it's pretty tough to see. Now, don't, doesn't that sound like a racist? Well, look at both sides of it. I mean, I've what had, are I've the had two sides? ball players that have been whacked with, you know, the injuries on the field, and, yeah. and you can't see it. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I don't see black and blue, I see black. Right. So you're saying that so, when you when you hire ball players, sometimes they do uh, get hit by a ball and you don't yeah. see the bruises. You yeah, know that to be true. You can't see the bruises. Yes, I do, Robin. <laughs> now, it says here that um, he, he says, we have females and dumb niggers and all the Mexicans who can't even write. Now, what do you make of something? By the way, to that other thing you just said, who cares if they get bruised? <laughs> right. I see. Okay. <laughs> Is that just an aside? I don't think you pass that since it's Stab wounds are hard to see, too. Now, now, uh, Mrs. Uh, Schott, what is this? I used to go to work and practice my martial arts on the niggers. They're easy to practice on with uh, kicking. They're Who easy to... said that? Mrs. Schott? No, Mark Furman. Oh. No, <laughs> now, those niggers, I mean, colleagues were lucky. Right. Because I pay my niggers to practice on. Taekwondo? Yes. Yes, I All have right. a lot okay, of money, right. and I So you're saying on... Mark Furman is not necessarily a racist. No, see, it's... It's, it's how dog, you look at it. Semantic. Right. Okay. Well, listen, let's, we'll yes, get back to you. honorable detective. We These will... things must be taken out of context. A very good-looking man, to too. Good-looking man. Well can... spoken, very eloquent. Right, okay. Well... In his accounts of his encounters with uh, them. Uh-huh. I guess you were upset because you were uh, railroaded and accused of being a racist, and you never really got anyone to defend uh, you, and I guess you're stepping forward and defending him. I think the whiter you are, those things happen. He's very white. Right. He's very nice. <laughs> yes. And this is how they target him. <laughs> I see, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's a bizarre phenomenon in this United States of pretending that the aggressive criminal murderers like that L.J. Simpson um, are 
are okay, but for the next. All right. Why don't you do me a favor? Short why don't you do me a well favor? Do me, a, do me a favor. Law enforcement. Why don't you go have your coffee and bring yes. your dog? Yeah. Bring your dog back in in a few minutes Make because sure. I have. Can I have cigarettes? In yes, here? I have something else. I, I have smoke cigarettes. I have something else to talk about. You're okay. So dainty. All right. Let me tell you, uh, Robin is about to do uh, the news on the O.J. Simpson trial. I watched it for a few minutes yesterday while I was typing with my feet. You only and watched a few minutes? Well, I, I told you I'm writing this book. I mean, I'm not kidding you when I say I'm writing this book and I'm down to the wire. But I, turned, I, I tuned it in and uh, I got really pissed off. I got pissed off. Well, first of all, I didn't catch it until the second half, but I understand they spent the entire morning... Listening to those tapes? They listened to the tapes for the entire morning, Robin. And you, then I assumed they were... I don't know. I thought the jury was sitting and listening to mm -hmm. them. When, when you're in a courtroom and they're playing these tapes, you know, you can't see the jury anyway. I just assumed that's what was going on. Then the announcer comes on and explains to me, they're doing this not in front of the jury. Mm -hmm. Now, what possible reason would Judge Ego have for listening to these tapes in front of the whole country? The only time that evidence should be played is in front of a jury. If this is evidence, if Judge Ego thinks this is evidence, which, by the way, I don't think it is. I don't think anybody in the right mind thinks this is evidence. Well, more important, if this has something to do with this case. Right. Why was he playing? So Judge Ego says in front of the world, I'm playing this. I don't want anybody to think that I'm hiding any of the evidence or hiding any of the truth. I want it all to come out. I don't want the public to think I'm hiding anything. Now, listen to this. This is the same Judge Ego who says he doesn't play to cameras. This is the same Judge Ego who screams at lawyers and says, Don't play to the cameras, Mr. Cochran. Yesterday, in fact, uh, Dean Ullman, the attorney who was handling the um, tapes for the defense, started to get a little dramatic. Judge Ego said, Don't talk so loud. He says, Mr. Ullman... I'm eight feet away from you. Now, this Judge Ego played the tapes for the public. A judge does not do that. A judge is a guy who sat and listened to these tapes in his private chambers and had a rule on what was admissible, what wasn't, and it should have been played for the jury, whatever was admissible. He was playing this for the audience viewing at, at home. home. So you got to understand something. This Judge Ito is not a judge. He is an actor. He is an actor like Fred's wife is an actress <laughs> because what he does, instead of being a waiter waiting for an acting job, he is a judge waiting for an acting yeah. job. And this guy... And he didn't get this job on his own either. We all want to see justice. The first time the whole country is tuned into a trial because of the celebrity of O.J. Simpson, and we wanted to see a judge conduct himself in a courtroom in a proper manner. And he's not doing it. And I'll tell you something else. I've never seen anything like it. These, this woman who turned in the Mark Furman tapes you looks... Mean, uh, Laura Hart McKinney? Laura Hart McKinney sits down on that stand. I don't know what she's talking about. She don't know what anyone says. This, this woman claims to be a writer. First of all, she has these wild tapes... She couldn't make a movie out of that? Yeah, she Jeez. couldn't figure out how to write something Hollywood would buy. If you can't write something out of that, there's something wrong with you. And then she goes, they, they, first of all, she looks bizarre. And she's sitting there and she's confused. She looked pain. She had a look of pain on her face. I thought she was going to burst into tears at any moment. Why? What, what, it was totally inappropriate, the whole look on her face. I don't know if she's disturbed or what. I don't know what her problem is. But she sat there and then they begin to question her. And she don't understand anything. She says stuff like this, Robin. She goes... Mm -hmm. You would have to explain to me what a direct recollection is. The, the, judge, the lawyer would go, do you have any direct recollection of uh, Mr. Furman saying these things? Uh, you would have to describe to me what a direct recollection is. I, I don't understand. Uh, I know, that's, that really bothered me, too, that she didn't understand anything. She's supposed to be a writer. They're speaking English, her language, and she didn't understand the question. None of you than Fred. <laughs> <laughs> something with her. The whole thing is upsetting. This and judge time they would ask is a farce. Something more direct. Yes. Was Mr. Furman speaking in character? I don't know. I know that we were working on a fictional work. Work. But Duh. I don't know if these were his thoughts. But that's a good explanation. <laughs> that could be one of the explanations. This is not evidence. This has nothing to do with anything. And Marsha Clark, I hope she isn't losing it because she still very much has a case. And the case boils down the to this. The question is, though, Howard. Yes. 
can this Jimmy, jury... You've seen the reaction yes. of just average people Sorry. that they've talked to yesterday. And I've seen the reaction of a lot of black individuals who were very, very upset over this. As I said, average people. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. No, I saw it on TV. They were screaming. Right. And what did they man... say? Did they care anymore about who killed Nicole no. and Ron? They said, we got to find a man who planted this evidence. We gotta find out who killed a Cole Simpson. It wasn't OJ. You see, this is what I have tried to point well, out. But that's what the before. jury's gonna say. Anytime this kind of thing occurs, people all of a sudden forget the criminal activity. Well, let me tell you something. It, it, it obscures. It's the same as the Rodney King case. Right. Rodney King committed a criminal act. And that disappeared. He wound up in a car chase with the police because he was doing something wrong. Yeah. Once they finished beating him, Rodney King had done nothing. Right. Now, let me tell you something. He was an innocent bystander who the cops attacked. Marsha Clark still has a case. You've got to go up in front of this jury, and it's going to be tough because you're going to be caught up in the word nigger. But let me tell you something. That, that pair is going to be fixated on, on nigger. who Mark Furman is and how the cops probably framed O.J. Well, that's why O.J. is the luckiest guy in the world. How many times in your life do you get uh, picked up for committing murder and it turns out that the cop is a tape of him using the word nigger? I mean, how lucky can you be in life? If O.J. had known this, he would have killed his wife years ago. <laughs> Man. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Do you know who killed these two people? It's a big joke. And uh, as as someone pointed out yesterday, this glove that O.J. used to hide his fingerprints, this glove, there's only 200 pair of these gloves in the world. You think Mark Furman got to run out and bought a pair of gloves? He found out Nicole Simpson was dead. He ran out and found in the middle of the night a pair of these gloves and framed O.J. Simpson. How could he do that? Okay, I suppose the scenario is this, that Mark Furman found two gloves at the scene of the crime and put one on O.J.'s lawn. Okay, fine. So let's say he did that. He would have to know that O.J. owned these gloves. Because they have photographs of O.J. wearing these gloves. They know that. He'd have to know that O.J. wears this rare form of glove. Now, since we're not accusing Mark Furman of the murders, as soon as he heard of these murders, within minutes, he would have to find a store that was open at midnight. No, I'm saying the gloves were at the scene. They're not saying that Mark Furman found the gloves, dragged them to the scene, bloodied them up, and then did it. They're yeah. saying he found the gloves. Well, and well, they're they're very gloves. lucky that O.J. just happened to have the same kind of gloves. Oh, I see. It was, a luck. it was a luck. Well, yeah. Once they found these gloves there, they went and looked at O.J.'s, and it just turned out that he had the same kind oh, of gloves. Oh, I see. Oh, that's even more believable. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, these gloves are so rare that, and boy, what a fortunate thing that a, <laughs> oh, a cop's salary, yeah, cop salary, he was able to get those particular gloves that nobody can find. You know what maybe happened? Maybe he framed them, but fortunately for him, O.J. really did it. There you go. <laughs> well, again, I'm saying Mark Furman. Right. They're not even saying Mark Furman bought these gloves. They're saying he found them at the scene and he just took one and put it at OJ's house. Well, as we said all along, Robin, you said it, I said OJ will walk free. And uh, yeah, we're booking him. We're about to have him on the show. Anyway, go ahead. You've got a couple of things to report about. Well, the yeah, you know, everybody's interested. First of all. I have to say that I am sick of hearing tapes in courtrooms because I can never hear them. Yeah, I know. They have to run the transcript. <laughs> why, why, why in 1995 don't they have good tape recorders? I don't know. What is it, uh, Baba Bowie? You know, Dominic's on the phone. He wants to explain why these tapes make it... Uh, it's a fact now that he thinks that O.J. will walk no matter How many what. times a day does uh, Dominic call here? He calls about three times a week. But and what do you do? You always turn him down? Yeah, but I mean, he sort of has a point here. Okay. Gary usually tells Dominic to go away, but well, that's why Dominic last time he called. We had made this point, but go ahead. Yeah. Dominic asked for Ralph now. <laughs> you know, Dominic calls and says, "Can I speak to Ralph?" You're and kidding. he says, become friends. And he says to Ralph, <laughs> "Ralph, get me on the air. Gary doesn't like me. Explain to Howard I need to get on the air." <laughs> a desperate man. Hello, Dominic, noted attorney. <laughs> Guys, you know what? These these uh, gloves do much more for OJ. If he gets convicted, there'll be a reversal. If he gets a hung jury, they'll never try him again. To give him the deal of the century. Wow. These gloves are a ticket to freedom. Not and the gloves, the tapes. Yeah, of course. Well, the fact of the gloves. You see, the theory is that is that Furman goes to the murder scene and picks up one glove and runs over to O.J. and dumps it there. Mm -hmm. It's Not like deja vu, this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's well, the same thing we just said. <laughs> but no, you're, you're saying that, that uh, O.J. will get off. He either gets off, or if it's a hung jury, they never try him again. And if he gets convicted, he'll get a reversal. No, no matter what happens, the man gets away. Wow. So it's a fait complete. And think about it. Two dead people, his blood, one out of a billion, could have been mixed. One out of a billion. And he's going to walk out of that courtroom smiling. 
Yep. It's a pretty amazing story. Well, he knew it yesterday, and that's why he broke down in tears. If, yeah. you, if you wrote a movie about this, would you believe it? No. It would be unbelievable. You couldn't fact, write a movie about it. if they do the movie, nobody will believe this ending. I know. Now, I want to know is when you're walking down the street and you see him, what are you going to say to him? Hey, you know what? The people will cheer him. I see what goes on. People cheer. They cheer all these ex-cons and all these guys who they know are guilty. Let me tell you something. It is so despicable. What's going on? This guy should have been put away for life. And if the judge had conducted himself right, the trial would have been over already. Three weeks. Absolutely. One, two, three, over. This is a. Why does a judge show tapes to the public, to America, with the jury not sitting there? Well, they're afraid of riots. Absolutely. Well, let me tell you something. I don't know what you say to. Oh, you know, yeah, they are afraid of riots. Judge Ito, what Judge does Judge Ito have to do with that? I don't know. Judge Ito is a, a nut. Kick. What is that? I think he's getting a kick out of here in the N-Word. Is that right, Mrs. Shot? Yeah, what else could it be? <laughs> Suddenly he's the host of N-Word Theater. <laughs> right. Well, maybe you got a point there. Well, you know what the N-Word really is, don't you? What? What about the N-Word Nicole? That's right. Ooh, dominant. Oh, you're so ironic. <laughs> what about the N-Word Oh. <laughs> I wrote that. There's a copyright of this statement. You can't you use it. We have a three-day week, and I expect the card game, no matter what. That's good. Then I you don't can... care about a book or not. <laughs> yeah, you can write my book, then. <laughs> There's a card game this weekend, no matter what. Good, yeah, have it. Who's playing? <laughs> I'm not. I have no other friends but you. You'll, I'll be standing on the corner soon. You are pathetic. I get a message yesterday. Go. <laughs> this is Dominic. Uh, I'm over at my house. If you need to talk to me, if you need a friend, call me. What? I don't know. If you just no, want to rap. Did, if you want to rap. I didn't say that. All right, all right. When do men rap, Dominic? What are the odds of Ron Goldman's father really getting his balls up in a dander, taking a gun and blowing O.J.'s back oh, of his head please, off? please, don't say that. Why not? Because that wouldn't do... You know, he's already lost a son. He'd then lose his life. His family no, he wouldn't. has suffered enough. Because he will go to jail. No, he wouldn't. Yes, he would. Who's going to blame him? He might go to Nobody jail. Nobody might blame him, but there'll be a trial and he'll go to jail. O.J. is so sure he's winning that he had his lawyers sue this week to protect his name. Yep. All these T-shirt companies and all these people manufacturing photographs, he actually went to court to stop them. Right. Oh, he's going to walk. And you know what it is, though? I know what the real reason for this is. Listen, uh, justice in this country has always been perverted, particularly when it came to black people. And I see that uh, what really what it is is that I've run into a few people on the street who have a secret smile. They give me a little smile. And the smile is, hey, this is a way to get back. This is a way to get back. It's not a way to get back. This is a guy who murdered two people. you got to separate out. What's well, going that's on? what I was trying to say. If you continue to release criminals because of these stupid, mm -hmm. you know, little cop problems, yeah. they're still criminals on the street. That's the point, that they're going out, and not in O.J.'s case necessarily. I don't think that O.J.'s necessarily going to kill somebody else. How do you know? <laughs> I do don't you know? know, but I have this feeling. But you know what it but is? But the point is, other criminals will. Right, and you know what's really odd? It's almost like, yeah, look at the white man now. Look at him now. We got his whole justice system all but screwed up. But there are up. certain people in this country who would now say to you, and especially in Los Angeles at this time, how many cases did Furman work on? They're going to reopen every, every one case. of those cases right. and let those people out of jail. Yep. But what if Furman did do things like that? What if he did you do that? You know what? Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, Howard has said in, in jest, but it's often true. <laughs> well, you better let me say it. Convict them of something. Yeah, right. <laughs> because so, you know they're up to All things. guys in prison are guilty of something. <laughs> it doesn't mean we got them on the right on charge. On the right charge. But they're guilty of something. <laughs> White, black, Puerto Rican, anything they are. I don't care what they are. They're guilty of something. And you know that, Dominic. You've represented people. Uh, they might have them on the wrong charge, but they're guilty. These are lifers. These are, these are guys who do crimes all the time. And O.J. is guilty. Well, it's the tragedy of it all is that that this man will go out and walk on the streets and, and get his... You know, the next trial is going to be for custody of his kids. Oh, I know. That's going to uh, be the big one. Uh, could you, could you remember, it's a different balance of tests. Could you sleep at night representing O.J. Simpson? Well, you unfortunately, lawyers... Oh, you could. Uh, yes, lawyers. Right. <laughs> answer to that yes, is I could. Right. In fact, I'm sleeping like a baby. <laughs> All right, very good, Dominic. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. The end of it is for nappy. Bye-bye. <laughs> Man, my end word is nap time because the cameras will be here. I want to look fresh. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to take a break. <laughs> we got that uh, analysis from Dominic. Very important. <laughs> I will be back right after this. All right. Thank you. You know... Uh, the only thing I can figure out with this whole OJ case is maybe there's some bizarre scenario where... 
somebody, one of these people who was sort of close to O.J. knows something but didn't want to step forward because they figured there was enough to hang him with? Maybe the, one of them will get and a guilty one conscience. one of them will finally spill the beans. You know, like maybe like a Cato will go in and be a little more forthcoming. If they see that O.J.'s about to get off. Uh, maybe somebody out there. Somebody who maybe uh, actually saw some of the evidence that night or got a confession from O.J. In his, when he was completely confused and said, I better get the hell out of the country. Somebody, somebody out there knows something. Speaking with Al Callings, who was AG, AC, a, AC, OJ's. OJ's friend, yeah. is going to be doing that uh, autograph signing on the Labor Day weekend, sitting in front of a white Bronco. And, and do people cheer him when he does such a thing, or do they go up and say, how could you? I don't know. All I know is he, what was the fee, $10,000 yeah. or 1,000 signatures, yeah. whichever comes first. And they said... Two hours or 1,000 1, signatures or something like that. I forget. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the thing that really got to me when I was reading about this whole thing was that they said he would sign just about anything and they were going to have certain things there, but he wouldn't sign anything that he thought was in bad taste. <laughs> oh. oh, don't even tell me that. <laughs> AC. <laughs> Nothing. I won't sign anything in bad taste. You don't think the whole thing is in bad taste? Do, I mean, do, do people... Sitting in front of a Bronco? Do people show up and uh, congratulate this guy and say, hey, pleasure to meet you. I'm a fan. Do they say all those bizarre things to AC Callings? Like, why are they there getting a signature? I hope there's um, coverage. I would like to see people. Where, where is this? It's somewhere out in Los Angeles. Why don't we send Stutter and John there to go uh, watch? I think it would be a wonderful, beautiful thing. Let's get it on tape. See who's there and why. I'd like him to interview the audience. That's right. What are you doing here? Yeah. Why don't we arrange for that, Gary, please? <laughs> I'm, I'm totally fascinated by that. People call us names. Yeah. We don't pose in front of Broncos. <laughs> Although, how much do you get paid? <laughs> I'm not telling you again. Mm. <laughs> that buys a lot of computer equipment. <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. Uh, I love the uh, media. They have a fascination with all this stuff. All you have to do is say the N-word, and you can get quoted all the time. Mm -hmm. So not only did we hear the tapes yesterday, but there are transcripts of everything that Mark Furman said in the newspaper. But here are the actual tapes. I like how the anchors all say N-word, too. I like that yes, on the news. the N-word. Like, what has come to be known as the N-word. <laughs> Please be advised that you are about to hear some very offensive N-words. Yeah. N-word, formerly known as nigger. But the, it's come to be known as. I heard that term yes. the other day. The N-word. I'm thinking of uh, posing in front of a Bronco on my cover of my book, my new book. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm Is it in about bad it. taste? Call AC. He I'll call AC. I wonder if AC knows anything. I wonder if AC, like, if, if OJ that night just said, Oh, man, I did it. I did it. Oh, man, what was I thinking? Drive fast. Drive fast, though. Please, AC. Give me to Mexico. <laughs> if you don't drive fast, I'll blow my brains out. Yeah, sure. It's like the scene from, uh, what's that Cleavon Little movie? Yeah. Where he's holding a gun on himself, saying to the audience. Blazing saddles. Yeah. Yeah. I think all the, all the white people come to lynch him, and he goes, don't step one close, well, don't step any closer, or I'll blow my own brains out. <laughs> They're like, ooh. <laughs> Wait a minute, he means it. Yeah. That's OJ. Mel Brooks used to be really funny. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, right. All right, so anyway, let's get let's to this. Let's get to the tapes. Mm hmm You won't be able to hear anything. Yeah, so why are we playing them? I just like to know, you know, it right. fascinates me how little, uh, how poorly the technology is handled in these courtroom situations. You can never understand what anybody's saying. All right, I think these are the tapes, even though, so you have something here, Mark, Mark Furman. All right, let's just see. Can we stop the choke because a bunch of niggers have a bunch of these organizations in the South End. And because all niggers are choked out and killed 12 and 10 years. Really extraordinary, isn't it? So what, I only hear his nigger. nigger. Yeah, that does come through loud and clear. <laughs> Mrs. Shot. He's uh, role playing. It's what? not fair. This is totally out of context. He was right. He's writing a screenplay, right? And you have to prepare. He was doing a character. Mrs. Shot feels. I can hear him acting. I can hear it in his voice. Mrs. Shot feels she should defend him. No one defended her when she was accused of being That's racist. That's true. It's yeah. true. I was writing a screenplay once. Right. And I had to get into character. Right. There's nothing wrong with beating a daddy. Right. Niggas are like mules. Now you gotta you... hit them between the eyes over and over before they listen to you because they're animals, them rascally niggas. Now, right. is that how you really feel? 
No, of course not. <laughs> With you, Robin. Woman's, <laughs> woman's rehearsing for a play. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Shot. That's why I feel bad for my poor Mackie Mark Furman. Right. Mackie Mark Yes, Furman. you know, I think that they've been, you know, they might have electronically doctored them tapes. Right. Now, that's something nobody's thought of. Right. Well, it sounds as wacky as all the stupid things that the defense says about O.J. <laughs> that night. So, here, let's hear some more. Okay, I'm sure. it's, it's fun to hear the word nigger out of Mark Furman's mm, mouth. Not necessarily. Why do you think everyone was tuning in? They wanted to hear him say nigger. I think everybody goes crazy over that yeah, word. Yeah. They want to hear people say it. I don't know that they're having fun. I'm thinking of starting, like, an all-N-word format. How about an N-word phone line? Right. You've reached the nigger hotline. You will hear people say nigger over and over again. We have tapes of Mark Furman saying nigger, various people saying nigger. Nigger references for today. Yeah. Press one if you would like to hear the word nigger gently. It's the nigger menu. <laughs> nigger Press menu. Two if you would like to hear the word nigger vehemently. And three? <laughs> Never mind. We'll call it the radio station WNIG. Oh. All nigger radio. It'll be wild. All, we'll have the highest... all the time. That's what people want to hear. Can I do one? Yeah, I couldn't understand that one. Well, one more. It's kind of fun to. That's why I wonder about those transcripts. If you can't hear, well, how do they know so much of what he's saying? Yeah. Yeah, I'm wearing headphones and I can't understand yeah. what he's saying. This woman transcribed this and wanted to write a movie? Who transcribed these things? She did. She claimed she paid him $10,000 for this, right? Wouldn't you record it a little better? But I also ask you, she had to ask to have things repeated several times by the d the t attorneys. Yeah. Her hearing's not that good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and she can't answer the question whether he was role-playing or not. Yeah. But she knows what he's saying. I can't hear a thing. <laughs> All right. Weird. That is weird. <laughs> Sounds like I hit a microphone, if you ask me. Yeah, did he know he was being recorded? <laughs> yeah. Okay, here is uh, Marsha Clark. Right. Trying to defend, you know, she's in the unenviable position of now having to defend this guy. Their posturing has been exposed as baseless, as a sham. They can't. All the evidence has proven conclusively and consistently that there was nothing planted in this case that Mark Furman had no opportunity to do so, whatever his attitudes, whatever his beliefs, whatever he would have liked to have done, he could not do it. Well, the defense would like to, uh, the judge to consider playing these tapes before the jury, but uh, Judge Ito says he'll have to sleep on it. Yeah, he has to go think about it. Here's he, the judge. A character. What's to think about? He'd already listened to yeah. the tapes. He heard their arguments. I have to wait to see what the TV reporters say, and then I'll do what they say to do. This is not something that I can rule upon from the seat of my pants. But you're not wearing I need pants. To sit down and look at each one of these individual situations and make the appropriate. Oh, ruling. what a serious actor! Did you hear that that delivery? I cannot make a decision. I have to think about it. I can't. I have to go a little frip a coin. <laughs> a little frip a coin. Frip a coin. <laughs> All right, very good. And here is uh, Robert Shapiro, one of the defense attorneys outside of the courtroom. His take on uh, the impact of the Mark Berman tape. Fortunately, the majority of the officers that I've come in contact with in the last 25 years feel exactly the same way I do about this. Totally appalled. I like how everybody knows yeah. what all officers think, too. Well, you know, they, they're ripping the LAPD apart in the courtroom, but outside they have to say, oh, I don't know any other mm. officers like Mark Furman. And that's in case some cop gives them a ticket so, they, can, right. so they don't no, get I'm their ass beat. That's right. I'm talking about all of you, just this one bad guy. <laughs> I want to know what people are going to say to O.J. out on the street when he gets free. Are they going to cheer like they did when his car was rolling down the road and A.C. was driving? And... I'll tell you, I should play that tape again of what this one guy did. He, he confronted uh, O.J.'s lawyers. Mm -hmm. He confronted uh, Carl Douglas. He sent me the tape. He was, he was there. He was reporting just like everyone else outside the courtroom. And he said to him, how do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? Should I play that? Why not? What the hell? What else we got to do, right? Well, at least we can hear him. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. a better guy at recording yeah. than a screenwriter. I got to rewind it, though. Take me a second. Take me a second. I think it's very relevant to the yeah. game. What he says yeah. is audible. Here we go. I think I have it now, Ron. 
I believe I do. You sure? No. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Bless you once again. Are those real sneezes? No, those were for the camera. <laughs> you are pandering. Have a good day. Yes, Carl Douglas. Have a good day. How do you go home and sleep at night knowing you know that he really did it? Who are you? My name's George. He's like, how dare you ask me how I sleep at night? Isn't it funny how his voice goes way up yeah. like that? Who are you? He's what? like, have a good day. Have a good day. Who are you? Right. <laughs> Get a life, George. I got a life. Yeah. Well, leave me alone, okay? I'm running my own business, okay? And so am I. I'm not taking your picture. I don't want your Seriously. How yeah. do you, how do you sleep at night? Tomorrow we should interview black people on the street and ask them about it. The O.J. case. Good luck. You go out there. That'll be fun. No, I'm not going to go out there. I'll send John out there. <laughs> Knowing that he really did it. You, there? And the, you know, you Parker there? knows he did it. there? He wasn't there, but well, I mean, DNA you know? don't lie. Oh, really? DNA don't you, lie. You're a scientist? Not a scientist. I'm just a, uh, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure it out. Huh? So why are you going to talk to me? Why not? Who am I going to talk to? Talk to somebody else. Talk to the D.A. Talk to the D.A., he says. What are you going to talk to the D.A. for? What, was it? what good is that going to do? So then the next day, he sees him again. What do you think is more of a challenge for Johnny Cochran defending a child molester that can sing or dance and dance or a murderer that can catch and run? This guy evidently thinks Michael Jackson is guilty of all charges as well, but... Yes, right. and uh, knows that Johnny Cochran has represented both. Right. Friend, fortunately, we live in America, so we, we, even people like you can express their opinions. And I, That's and why I I'm here. That. I can disagree. Opinion of the common man. I can ask you to get out of my face, but you <laughs> have your right to say whatever you want to say. Thank and you. you see, I don't want to take your picture. Hey, no wonder he passed law school. He understands the law perfectly. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah. Are you Johnny Cochran's valet? <laughs> and what do you do for a living? Why are you here unemployed? Watching Why are you watching? I like this guy. Unemployed. Unemployed. I'm unemployed. I'm one of the proud unemployed. Yeah, right. And he's proud of it. I like this guy. I'm unemployed. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not gonna lie to you. Him and his buddies start laughing at him. Why are you unemployed? Why are you watching me? Do you have a life? <laughs> <laughs> they laugh at him. <laughs> do you have a life? <laughs> no, obviously. Our life is devoted. To, that's what I hope they do to OJ on the streets. I, I, although I know, I know in this sick country, everyone will run around and go, OJ! So what you're saying is that there's yeah. no longer going to be justice doled out by the court. You're hoping right. people will dole out justice on the street. I believe I made that clear. <laughs> and then finally, the guy gets the old of uh, Carl Douglas again. You know what, though? OJ could probably take you to court. Yeah, let him. If let him. you did something like that. Yes. And I'd when? Let, and when? That's why I don't do it. <laughs> that's why no one else should do it. We're trying to put up, and they keep trying to shut us up. And that's the real question. How can they be so interested in a certain... So he's giving a little press conference out on the street, and this guy asks a question. Truth, yet not want to hear theories that are cogent and that are relevant, but may be inconsistent with their theory of guilt. Are you going to put the Brentwood Butcher on the stand? Are you going to put the Brentwood Butcher on the stand? Huh? Are you going to put the Butcher on the stand? Will the Heisman you're hacker here, ever testify? Again. You're here again talking to me? Will the Heisman hacker ever testify? Aren't you on vacation? Aren't you on vacation? I think he planned that comeback or what? Aren't you on vacation? Carl's one of those guys like strikes me as like, it's a good thing he's a lawyer, you know. That way he can fight without having to get in a real fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'll take you to court. He'll take you to court, that's his thing. How do you feel knowing that most Americans feel you're the lowest form of scum ever to walk the planet? <laughs> huh? Huh? You gonna have OJ over for th at Thanksgiving to carve your turkey? Are you gonna have OJ over at Thanksgiving to carve your turkey? Are you always as big of a jerk or do you try hard? No, well, there you go. <laughs> and on and on and on. And, and I'll tell you something. I don't care what your profession is. I could not sleep at night defending O.J. Simpson. Well, as Dominic said, your buddy Dominic there says he'd take this case. Yep. Of course he would. he says lawyers have to do this. It's like somebody's twisting, twisting their arms. I'm going to try and uh, hire Johnny Cochran to help me sue Evergreen. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Evergreen hears about that, I'm sure they'll just settle. That's right. <laughs> Jackie, look at you, pal. 90-minute filthy joke video. Who farted? I smelt it. Everybody raving about it. Funnier than the Mark Furman page. $15 plus $4 shipping and handling. Joke special. Buy two, get one free. Call 1-800-323-KING. <laughs>
I made Jackie go home and, and count up the nigger references on his tapes. Uh, how many did he get? Oh, 158. Had to take a break, list that we're and up to. He's not finished. That's right. Hey, I'm still going. Still going strong. Wednesday night, September 20th at Rascals Comedy Club in West Orange, New Jersey. For info and joke lands, internet address call 516-9221. Okay, I sent Stuttering John up to Harlem yesterday because of the Mark Furman tapes. Hero of the Stupid. My friend Stuttering John. I became aware yesterday because of the uh, Mark Furman tapes that uh, many people in the black community were screaming that, you see, now they got to go find a real killer of Nicole Simpson. So I said, this is unbelievable because uh, O.J.'s going to get off. So I said, so everyone says to me, well, you're stereotyping. Stereotyping, sir. I said, okay, let's go up to Harlem and find out what everyone's thinking. Did you find anyone who thought he was uh, guilty? Anyone who thought he was guilty? Yeah. Um, one Puerto Rican. A Puerto Rican. Yeah. I see. <laughs> uh, it turns out today that every convict has been framed. There's nobody in jail That's who belongs right. you there. You should open all the doors. Just throw them open. <laughs> because there were racist cops. Like, they, like, like there isn't millions of racists running around this country. Every Everybody constantly talks about a racist society, but as soon as they hear somebody say the word nigger, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> this proves it. This, so I guess this tape supposed to prove that every cop talks this way. But anyway, um, here it is. Uh, so, so Stuttering John went up there, and after he was done with the interviews, do you know he could not, Stuttering John could not get a cab back here? <laughs> because no it's cab. The opposite kind of. Uh, no, no cabs yeah. run in Harlem. Oh. Oh, Nobody will drive up there. To be had. So uh, John, of course, uh, flagged down a police officer and got a ride back out of his. The police brought you out. Yeah. 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 yeah I like. Can I thank the officers? Go ahead. Officer Melendez, George Melendez, and Officer uh, Sean um, O'Brien. Yeah. <laughs> John was sinking fast. The sun we was going get down. Get him out of here. <laughs> get this boy out of town. <laughs> He's John went up there by cab? Yeah. Yeah. Was the guy pissed when you yeah. told him? Yeah. Oh, I go, yeah, 125th Street. He goes, yeah. What happened to you? What happened to you? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I was a there. What happened to you? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing that to me for? You're a white guy. All right. I bet you, like, the tires were screeching and stuff as he dropped you off. <laughs> yeah, did, you, did he actually stop or did you just have to jump he out? He stopped, but he was one of the most angry cab drivers. Really? Like but I'm sure you tipped very well. I did. Yeah. Okay. Why would you take a cab in? Well, how else would you go there? By car subway? Service. Uh, Tom, car me. service. Oh, I see. Tom called me afterwards. Johnny, I would have got your car service. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, high roller. <laughs> All right, here we go. Stuttering John trying to find out about the OJ case. Now, I got to say one thing. Yes. Th this was almost as scary as being at the Mike Tyson thing. All right. But not quite as. <laughs> not quite as. All right. Where did you, I mean... Uh, 125th Street and Lexington Avenue. As a matter okay. of fact, Stuttering John says that like while he was doing the interviews, there were guys in front of him dealing crack who were yelling at him, Is that a camera? Is that a camera? And, and John goes, this no, is not a, this not a I mean, if You've seen tape recorders. Do they look like cameras? I mean, <laughs> if, if you wanted to cast like stereotypical guys, these are the guys. Like, All right. Guys. Let me hear what happened. Drinking and smoking weed. <laughs> smoking weed. Smoking, <laughs> smoking, <laughs> drinking. Hang around, my brother man. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Can I ask you guys a question up for the radio? I'll ask you a question for WXRK. It's a radio station. Radio station? Yes. WDLS. Oh. No, 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 XRK. It's okay. Yeah. Based on the Furman tapes, is OJ innocent or guilty? Innocent. Uh, oh, next. Uh, undecided. Undecided? <laughs> Even after the bloody gloves? Undecided. He's not guilty. <laughs> Why do you think that, sir? Because they are, they call it a sensational trial. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> they are, the public thinks he's innocent, the majority. Number three, <laughs> J.O. philosopher. If he did the, the job, he didn't do it by himself. Oh. oh, you think someone else was in there? With right. Yeah. So therefore, he's innocent. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> By the way, I didn't want to tell you this. This is really juror number six. Oh. <laughs> so what do you think about the Furman tapes where the... Where the uh... He's automatic. He, uh, he's... Uh, uh, 
Uh, Miles Palmer is one who's going to make him walk. He's going to make him what? He's going to make him walk. They're going to turn him, he's going to walk free. Because he's a racist. Absolutely. The tapes prove that. And he has a reputation for that. Thank you. You know, if they had a videotape of O.J. killing Nicole, this guy would still think O.J. was innocent. He didn't do it alone, so he's but, innocent. But they found Mark Furman tapes, therefore Mark Furman framed O.J. because the guy's a racist. <laughs> well, that's not what this guy said. <laughs> I wish he had said that. <laughs> All right, now here's... Um, uh, by the way, these are just random. We're not sitting and setting anybody up. And, nope. and quite frankly, Howard, why would you expect this guy to make any sense? <laughs> well, listen, you put a microphone out there. Whoever walks by, I said, John, whoever walks by, ask Howard, him. Believe it or not, as hard as it was to find, there was, I even got some guys in business suits. There you go. This, yes. one, this one here, it turn, uh, John sort of turns the block into a town meeting. Oh, yeah? Because then he starts talking to one guy. Then another guy comes over, Everybody then a woman comes in. over, and then it's like they're all having a discussion, and they are all experts. Okay. They know all the facts, except they're just a little bent wrong. Okay. Is this a part, you know, with the women, Gab? Yeah. She has no teeth. Wow. <laughs> She's talking with gums. All right, here we go. Yeah, what do you want, man? This is for WXRK Radio. Yeah. What do you um, want? After the, based, based on the Furman tapes, do you think O.J. is innocent or guilty? Innocent, man, but without a doubt. My reasons... It's just like anything else. When a man gets famous, they're always framing him. Because they're always trying to assassinate their re reputation or whatever they have going for themselves. It's always a frame. <laughs> you know that guy's done some time. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> trying to always assassinate him. <laughs> he is between engagements right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sooner the man gets famous. They assassinate, they assassinate him. Camp blood in the gloves. <laughs> Do you have any examples besides O.J. where this has happened in uh, American history? Yeah, I, I have one. Uh, if you remember the, the, the leader of the NACP, he uh, uh, <laughs> supposedly had harassed a female and he lost his office. Things like that nature. Every time a man gets above himself... Or Didn't a black woman accuse him of uh, har harassing him? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If he was above himself, they try to break him down. So you think that Mark Firm, in, in lieu of these... So you mean no black guys have ever committed a crime? And let me point out that it was uh, Mr. Chavis who arranged a payment for that woman. Yeah. If he was above himself, they try to break him down. So you think that Mark Firm, in, in lieu of these tapes, is trying to... In other words, he stepped on somebody's toes verbally, and therefore it became a vengeful thing. And he's been framed. I mean, no one man could do, commit a crime like that and stay composed like he is. You know, that's that, that, it, it, OJ's composure. Yeah, you know, so. no, no man can be composed. Wait a minute, roll that back. <laughs> I just want to hear him. Again. There's a lot of tape to hear. You need a lot of people to hear, Robin. No, no, no. He, he seems to be speaking from the Bible. Didn't he say verily? <laughs> no, I think he said vengeful. <laughs> I thought revelly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> go back. Everybody wants an interpretation. It became a vengeful thing, and he's been framed. I mean, no one man could do, commit a crime like that and stay composed like he is. You know, that's, that's it, it, OJ's composure. Yeah, you know, so you, so that right there tells the public something. A man can't sit through all that trials and tribulations, all right, and 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 insist on innocence and have the composure that he has, all right, and and and, and the the object of the crime. How it was committed, <laughs> the slaughter that was produced. No one man could do that by himself. I don't believe that. So you think that because of the Mark Furman thing, this is definitely saying, hey, yeah. you know, O.J. didn't do it. Right, that's right. But how do you explain the when when he, when when uh, Nicole called 911 when O.J. was... Hey, every man, I don't know a married man who haven't slapped his woman. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> uh, how about me? <laughs> he doesn't know you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I told you, like, guys up in Harlem are, are all saying, hey, man, everybody beats their wives. That's why the cops are always there. You know, people up in Harlem are screaming, I don't want to deal with these racist cops. They should be dealing with any cops. Yeah, this wasn't the right cop. Yeah, just the, yeah, yeah, we'll find the right cop who isn't a racist. So what if they're racist? Don't have cops to your house. Stop beating your women. Now, come on. <laughs> come on, man. Every man has to be. Man, you don't know some of these bitches. <laughs> you don't know, man. These bitches, they get out of line. How are you supposed to deal you with it? You gotta slap a woman. We can't uh, communicate, obviously. I got to go to slap her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The extent of how much he beat her, probably be on the extent of how much resistance she put up. Oh! <laughs> 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 she put up a 
Oh, boy. The more resistance, the more he'll beat her up. Right. <laughs> That's right. If she was beat bad, she resisted. That's the Einstein theorem. <laughs> uh, if the more resistance, the less the man... The more, the more he has to beat yeah. her up. More equals more. <laughs> <laughs> what? E equals MC fifth. <laughs> the extent of how much you beat her, probably be on the extent of how much resistance she put up. That's how that life is. In other words, if she put up a lot of resistance, then he'll beat her. Well, I'm going to keep on beating her until she re until she, uh, resistance is gone. Who oh, should resist? <laughs> no, it's not that she shouldn't resist. She's a woman. She deserves her equal rights. All right? But when you're getting an argument with a woman, sometimes the only way that... It comes out and it resolves itself as you go a, a physical a physical spat or a verbal spat and then you make up. That's life. <laughs> All right? So, so there. Sometimes it goes beyond what yeah. it's supposed to do and that's abuse. You understand? Oh. But so what would be the borderline? <laughs> oh, that was a good guy, one. He knows everything. <laughs> this guy ought to get his own talk show. Sometimes it goes beyond, and that's a beauty. What is a beyond? See, that's why Sally Jesse Raphael loads up her audience with guys like this. <laughs> what is beyond? I want to know what that no, is. Sometimes they're normal abuse, and right. then it go beyond. Like killing us. You know, sometimes you got physical and, and verbal, and, and then, then it goes beyond. The spiritual. Right. <laughs> physical spat, verbal spat. So, like, so, yeah, what would be allowed? There's no borderline to abuse. There's no, you know, there's no abuse is abuse. All right. Abuse and a horse is a horse, a horse a horse. This is a. Now stop it! This man is making sense. I guarantee you, the jury <laughs> is oh, thinking the same it. stuff. Stop it! Oh Robert. yes, that Robin. Is not a a. You cannot make that leap. Mm -hmm. You cannot. Mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stop it! See it. Okay. A spat is a spat, yes, all right? But it had to be something abuse, all right abuse between the spat is a spat. Yeah. <laughs> two, or there wouldn't have been more than one. You see what I'm saying? It would have been a one-time situation. She would have put the law on him, and that would have been it. And she would have divorced him, and she would have been gone. But it had but no wanted to be there. Yeah, she wanted to be with a man, all right? The father of her children. He, he's the father of the children. He wants, he wants to be there. So they both put up with certain things. That's life. OJ is so lucky he's black. Oh, stop it. He is so lucky. That That is the worst thing you've ever said. Oh, come on. That is the worst thing he's you've got, ever He's got, this guy said. is defending him because he's black. And this guy has a problem. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is this defending OJ. This is every guy there, though. though. And, and the whole jury. anybody who, who really could handle life there? I don't know. Yeah, What's the deal? <laughs> The, guy, the guy's handling life. No, all living, not. breathing people. Abuse is abuse and a spat is a spat. Well, it's not like you we knew what he was going to say. Well, 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 what do you think OJ's mentality was? What, what do you think OJ's mentality is? OJ came from there. And right. where, where do you think the jury came from? I don't know where the jury came from. I hope they came from someplace else. Yeah, they came from Mars. <laughs> the jury of his peers. Everybody goes through these changes. All right? They're either it's either running lovely or it's running bad. <laughs> all right? She get up one morning, she angry. You can't, you can't talk peace to a woman that's angry, or a man that's angry, all right? Or a man that's being frustrated. You can't, how are you going to do that? Yeah. Well, right. now, 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 don't forget, he's answering the question whether O.J. is guilty or innocent. Saying, hey, you know, she deserved it. We always thought he was innocent. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, the, yeah. Sir, this is for XRK. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We thought he was innocent. We always thought he was innocent so, from the beginning. So now, with the with the Furman tapes, it only it only uh, con concretes your opinion. Right. We concrete your. He can't talk either. Look, he can't handle life either. And there's five guys surrounding me now. It only concretes your opinion. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Cement, cement. Yeah. No. <laughs> What's your IQ again? Dude, I know, but I was getting nervous now. Man. I say. Uh, Why were you nervous? Because it was five people now, and I thought they were all thinking I was portraying this guy as an idiot. Right. Like I was like, you know, Haram. Or something. <laughs> yeah, Stop trying to get into other people's hands. Yeah, just concentrate on what you're saying. <laughs> I was afraid they thought I was an idiot, so I started talking like an idiot. <laughs> to confirm that I'm an idiot. You know, I knew that the, I knew this was the one word I screwed up. Right. It was definitely that that he was innocent because for one thing, I've always told her that in the uh, Nicole house there had to be three or four killers involved. I the see. people that killed her and that man, they killed before. There's I see. A conspiracy theory. But why does he know so much about murder? Because maybe he's done a few. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. This man knows how many people it took. No, you don't understand. That's, that's the uh, Black Perry Mason. <laughs> this guy's in a suit jacket, though. Is he? Yeah. Well, absolutely. He's on his way to court. <laughs> <laughs> he dug it out of the goodwill bin. <laughs>
<laughs> no doubt about it. They killed before. So you think that you know? it, it, you think it's a case of the white man trying to frame the, the black? Oh no 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 no. Uh, 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 Mark Furman. We believe that they uh, when they went onto the property, they laid the glove down mm -hmm. to justify themselves for being on the property. So Johnny Cochran comes up with this cockamamie scam that everyone knows is not true. You know, it's just it's just impossible that Mark Furman could have gotten this glove and. And now it's reality. It's like, yeah, that's what he did. But there's no facts backing it up. But, of there's course, there's no more evidence. facts. There's more evidence backing up that O.J. committed the murder. But, but everyone's willing to say, oh, there it is. There's no evidence, but there it is. Johnny has total credibility with these people. Right. He wouldn't lie to them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Johnny. Another wife abuser. Jesus. Illegally. Man who beat a black woman. Johnny Cochran. You know, now this thing comes out with Furman that he's what got a hell of a problem. What color that woman was? A lot of difference. <laughs> Women, he hates everybody, he can't stand nobody. But we always believe that the whole case, the prosecution's case, was just so mixed up. But then how do you explain all the 911 phone calls? You want to take this? Something. The 911 phone calls, you have to understand that after Nicole got divorced, to take his case. that picture, that one picture, okay, that she put in that, in that safe deposit box, okay, that wasn't because she was afraid of her husband. OJ already had threatened her to take those kids away because she was walking around with the wrong kind of people. And he caught her. So she needed proof. She needed a... Right. That's why yeah, but, yeah, but uh, you don't think she needed... Jeez, <laughs> if she talked to Nicole... Evidently, she was a confidant. The beating. Uh, let me tell you something. If you look at the, if you look at the picture... I look what everyone's concerned with. OJ, Nicole... Now, she has analyzed the no. picture yeah. that was in the safe deposit box. Oh, you got to hear that. now knows exactly what was see, going on. this is your problem, Robin. You don't understand. This woman is a very famous picture <laughs> analyst. And you're just, you know, you're, you're, you're stereotyping. You think she doesn't work. What do you think? She's a, I can't believe that you can look at a picture, she is a picture and know expert. exactly why somebody put it in the safe deposit hey, box. Kenny Kingston can get you to repeat your name three times, and he can tell you what's going to happen in the future, too. <laughs> yeah, but, the, yeah, but uh, you don't think she needed a beating. Uh, let me tell you something. If you look at the, if you look at the picture, I come from the South Bronx. We come from around here, okay? okay? We know what a beating. I don't know what you can consider a beating. Well, well, I mean, on the tape, she was screaming. Wait a minute. Let me tell you something. I'm a woman. Okay. If she was screaming, you are. she wouldn't have got to the phone if he was really beaten. No, no, no. He was <laughs> in that a woman is being beaten, and every time she used to see OJ come into that door, she would run to the phone. And every time she ran to the phone, the woman, the operator is telling her, Miss Smith, are you still there? She's listening to what OJ is telling the people that was in the house. Okay? Okay. Think about it, man. <laughs> Could you ever argue with a woman like this? You can't. No, you no. would have to hit her. <laughs> you would have to beat her. You know, there's a point. I understand that, what that other guy was talking about. I don't know a man who's married and hasn't beaten his wife. <laughs> he must be married to her. So, so you think she was lying and she wasn't getting beat? That's what you're saying? No. Right. You don't understand because... He was doing this to secure there children. Was people, there was always two people in the house all the time. Do you think that he was beating her or no? No, no. That New Year's Eve, the, new, the day of the New Year's Eve... She knows more about their lives than she does about her own. She tells you in the letter that she was the one that initiated it. <laughs> because if I'm going to... If, he, if he's going to punch me in the eye, I'm going to get a closed eye. She didn't have a closed eye. She had it here, like she was hit. <laughs> like what he said, he pushed off the bed and she hit herself on top of the eye. She didn't have no... But how about... All right, let me ask you guys one question. <laughs> I'm not... Or all this I gone nuts. would love for her to be an expert and be called to the witness stand. See, I could. You see, that would be a good trial. They're not calling the right people. They keep calling all these boring Chinese yeah, guys. Witnesses. Yeah, witnesses. I want this expert on the the, the eye. And you don't want to know something. Judge Ito really would allow her in <laughs> because he allows everything in. Because he sits and listens to the Mark Furman tapes when they're not even going to be played to the jury. Yeah. What, what was the point of that? I wanted the public to hear it. He thinks he's conducting a soap opera. We have no but how about, all right, let me ask you guys one question. Huh? But how about, how, how about the bloody glove and the DNA? I mean, oh, the DNA, DNA, you cannot, you cannot prosecute, you cannot prosecute someone only on DNA evidence. It has to be more than that. <laughs> but the DNA was one in a and when, and when, and when, and, and when, and when, um... What do, what do you suggest we do then? <laughs> what do you, how do you do it? Minute, why is there a case? If you can't prosecute someone on DNA, <laughs> hey, listen, she's the lawyer, not me. <laughs> and and when and when um, excuse me, and when the man and when um, excuse Mark me. Furman <laughs> saw that it was a black. The first time he was called to the property, to the mansion, that OJ busted his car. Right there, that was negative. A white woman with a black man. Oh, I love that. Dude. 
first time uh, the police were called to the property. <laughs> the property. <laughs> the property. I love that. The property. It wasn't a house. No. It was a mansion. It was the property. See, the, uh, over at my estate, uh, <laughs> we have called the police to the property several times. This <laughs> is my property. <laughs> this is my property here. <laughs> uh, that would be Mr. Sanderson's property where the police have no Your business being. property been. starts over there. Why would they on the property? <laughs> the property. <laughs> the first time the police were called to the property. <laughs> so funny when you hear, like, you know, somebody who's, you know, obviously a little bit limited going, the property. <laughs> the property. The property. I mean, this is this is totally this is total insanity. Is what I'm There's nothing rational about this. <laughs> and when he saw in the scene of the crime that she was dead, and that was the same woman that was married to that black man, and saw a white man next to her. No evidence to any of this, but she got it all. This is what Mark Furman was thinking. She can tell. She knew what Nicole was thinking by looking at a picture. Right. <laughs> she has seen Mark Furman. But DNA, is, you can't convict a man on that. No. She has seen Mark Furman. She knows right. what he was thinking that night. She called the psychic hotline. They told her. <laughs> he, he, him and his Russian. distorted mind put two and two together. We cannot let this black man get away with this. Oh, Mark Furman, you mean? Right. Oh, I got okay? Yeah. So right there, he planted the evidence. Oh. Okay, and Van Adder, huh, he better get himself a lawyer. Who? Van Adder. Van Adder was um, the one that took over to get the blood. Yeah. And then carried the blood to the scene of the crime. Oh, oh. Remember, cops always carry swatches. Okay, very easily. Okay? And it has to be more than one person. Swatches? Wait a minute. She now knows what the police... She is a genius. Why is she there on the street? What was she doing, John? She should Can't be... even find herself teeth. She's got the whole... She's there. Excuse me, man. For someone who knows so much, can't you find a dentist? <laughs> police always carry you know, swatches? You... Yeah. Plain those 911 phone calls where he was yelling in the background and she was on the phone crying. Right, but she was in another room. When you listen to the 911 tapes, you can clearly know if a woman is on the phone and I don't want her to get on the phone and I'm trying to beat her up, as she says, she wouldn't be able to get on that phone. She's in another room. So that she locked herself in the bedroom. Do you understand his point? No. <laughs> if you're giving a, wo a woman a beating, she don't have time to be on the phone. No way. She's busy. Well, What's she doing on the phone? There was no beating. He didn't know. <laughs> Doesn't he realize the beating that was coming? She saw him coming, and she got on the phone. What, Robin? I'm gonna give you his address. You can go argue. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can have a gun back. She locked herself in the bedroom, but at the same time, people are not listening to what's going on. He's raising hell because she's in the house freaking off with some guy with drugs and all of this. This is the reason why he's raising hell. She made these phone calls to protect herself because he obviously must have threatened to take his children away from her. So she was doing this. I thought it was because of I thought it was because of the she, she was uh, committing sodomy to some other man. She, she was trying to protect herself because he obviously must have told her, "Look, you keep on carrying on the way you're carrying on, and you're getting out of control." I'm going to take. Right. She was out of control, not OJ. But you know what's interesting to me? <laughs> They're always putting words in the people's mouth. Yeah. You know, they have decided what Nicole was say, thinking and saying, and what OJ must have done. Yeah. They don't want to deal with just what's on the tape. Right, nothing. O.J. must have already said to her before well, the tape started so why do you think that uh, he was going to take away the kids. So uh, my guess is that the jury thinks just like this. No, I and don't know. And O.J. will walk. I, I mean, there's just no hope that O.J. I will go to jail. I don't think that that's a, a logical conclusion. I though. guess not. My kids, I'm going to have to take my kids from you, Nicole. I love you in the whole nine. But oh, oh, so then she set the calls up. Set the calls make, up, right. Exactly. This oh, way that so we wouldn't take the kids. She just set up. Yeah. Okay, that, that is a premium book for me. How to make O.J. come to her house mm -hmm. and break down her door so right. she could get on the phone. Right. She tricky. Wow. <laughs> she, 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 because uh, didn't he say, I thought he was guilty? Yeah. Yeah, this is the Puerto Rican guy who's yeah, right. guilty. But, but, but you have no idea why he thinks OJ. It's just as stupid as why everyone thinks he's innocent. Well, I actually know what he's talking about. Do you? He's saying that, that OJ couldn't look at uh, Nicole's parents in, in, the in, the in the eye. Oh, I see. That's evidence. He's been told by his lawyers in that courtroom. He's been told already about how to look, right? Not to look at the jury, not to look at certain people. He's been told. His lawyers have told him that, you oh. know? Oh, I see. Uh, 
Everybody's. Well, he said that the reason why is because he's been. Listen to this discussion. Th these two guys are debating now. Right, because you say, hey, don't you understand, my brother? That, <laughs> he was uh, told by the lawyers. He would look them in the eyes, but they're saying, don't look in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> hold about the lawyers, sir. No, no, it doesn't matter. If, if, if we have a family, doesn't like, matter. Nobody. No, none of these Back folks so far nothing. understands what the jury system is about and what court of law is about. But this is know, based on facts, not on yeah. how you look at someone in the eyes. Facts mean nothing in this case. <laughs> if we broke up and we got divorced or whatever, the mother of my, uh, of my wife and the father of my wife, if they kill my wife and I love my wife, believe me, I will try to get to them no matter what. Uh, if I'm innocent, I will get to them to make them sure that... How do you, how do you respond to that? <laughs> Imagine you married to that guy. Oh. <laughs> you don't understand, man. I don't care about no evidence. If you if you commit something, you know your, your wife is dead. You would try to get to the parents, wouldn't you? Just say the mother me. was your wife and the father was your sake, wife. For Christ's sake, the mother and the father. <laughs> We're in a courtroom. Okay. I wish I could capture this dialogue in a film. You know, well, I mean, I F. Lee Bailey is here. Listen to this up. We are in the courtroom. Oh, we're in the courtroom. Just <laughs> <laughs> a second. You know, I got to take a break. Oh. Nobody gets dialogue. This is real dialogue. This is real dialogue. <laughs> this is like the retarded McLaughlin group. I'd like to get all these people. I'd sign them to TV contracts. Sunday morning, we discuss the issues of the day. You know what? There's a. I have a huge a audience. Movie based on that idea. It was called Network. Is that right? <laughs> Hey, I, I wanted to get. Can you write, Did you get these people's phone numbers and addresses? I want to sign them to no, the television. No, I'm sure deal. I'll find them there again if I go there. And now it's the retarded McLaughlin Group with your host Howard Stern. Hello, today's discussion: Bosnia. What do you think? If you gonna get to Bosnia, where's that man? <laughs> hey, hey, you talk about Bosnia. Let's talk about the OJ. All right. Subject number two. <laughs> OJ, innocent or guilty? The man is guilty because he can't look his wife in the eye or the parents or the mother. If I was going to kill someone and I was innocent, I would be the mother and the father. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go to our next expert commentary. What do you think? OJ, innocent or guilty? He ain't guilty because, uh, what do we talk about? <laughs> If he Ooh. got the We'll take a break. Let me remind my uh, guests that there's lots of crack in the green room, and we will take a short break <laughs> and be back. I want to put that together. I think I could sell that. Am I nuts? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. I right. want, would you watch it? You're nuts of course right. I'd watch it, but nobody's going to buy it. You're nuts, but you're right. All right. Jesus. Who could not watch that? I, I know I could uh, I could definitely handle that three ring circus. <laughs> oh, you couldn't One. handle it. <laughs> One. First of all, I'm a nervous breakdown. You can never have a regular correspondent. You have to give a different group of people every week. Uh, get me uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg on the phone, the head of the, <laughs> and uh, tell him I have a new show I need to pitch. Call Mike Ovid. <laughs> yes. Disney. We used yeah, to round I'm going to get people. a bidding war going on this. <laughs> we this used to round those people up for Channel 9, though. Remember, we used yeah. to keep them in the van. We, we. Oh, man. <laughs> we, we. John. John and I used to call it Fishing for Humans. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon here? Yeah, she is. All right, I'll take a break, and then I can come back to the tape. Yeah, she's, All right. she's looking great. You mean we have to interrupt this tape? <laughs> uh, yeah. But please, uh, call call one of these Hollywood geniuses, either Jeffrey Katzenberg Why or... Why not, uh, what's your Ted Harbour? No, nah, he's too low level. <laughs> the, the guy I like out there in Hollywood is this Jeff Katzenberg. He's the guy who left Disney and started a company with Spielberg and Geffen. These guys are free thinkers. They, they have to be Dreamers. hungry, too, don't yeah. they? Yes. I am gonna. I, that guy seems intelligent to me. <laughs> you get him on the phone for me, Gary. I am going to uh, pitch this to him. Then I'm going to call Ovitz over at Disney. You don't I'm, think this is the kind of program Fox would go for? No. Hmm. Rupert Murdoch, huh? <laughs> Crafty individual. They could put it on right after Alien Autopsy. All right. Mm. <laughs> and they do a lot of black shows. That's true. Hmm. This will beat out Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I got a hit. Call Rupert Murdoch for me. Get Murdoch on Katzenberg and get me Ovitz. All three of them on a the line bidding at once. <laughs> let them let them court me. Where's Moonbees and all this? Yeah, Moonbees. Screw Moonbees. Uh, CBS is too unstable at this point. You think so? Yes. But they need a hit. Yeah, but they don't understand black television. Fox does. <laughs> all right, I got to take a break. Because I, I feel like I'm in a loony bin. <laughs> and then I'm going to, uh, then we'll get Shannon in here and then, you know, maybe I'll do a little make out with her. Mm. <laughs> Didn't she, wasn't she with Gene Simmons? Are they still together? I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. We'll right after out. these words. Hey. Yeah, promotional stuff. <laughs>
promotional junction? Yeah, I just threw that word in. Oh, is yeah. it hot in here? Today it's 150 degrees in our studio, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We are frying an egg, right? I bet you if I broke an egg right on here, it would fry. It's a new world's record. I think heat. your body is particularly warm. warm. What about... Warm. No, as a matter of fact, I run cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have that overcoat thing on yeah, yeah. Yeah. Overcoat? This is a, a, a sheer shirt. Yeah. I'll take it off. It makes no difference. It's still hot. Come on. Jackie, is it hot? It's, Fred? No, it's, it's hot. hot. Come on. I'm just trying to make it easy for you. Yeah, Shut up, John. <laughs> Stupid ass. I'm trying to make it easy yeah. for me. Don't make it so easy for me, all right? I'll make it easy for myself. Can I get a box of raisins? Where's Gary? Gary, make sure I get a box of raisins in the morning. A box of raisins? No, I, I, so he'll know what I mean. I don't want to even get into it. I get a yogurt every morning and then... <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that Larry Sanders show where he's complaining about his yogurt the whole time? Oh, oh yeah. last week? Yeah. So I don't want to sound like that, but... <laughs> you know, food's kind of important to me. I think the guy takes raisins, he gets the, he, I need raisins and yogurt. I don't like mm -hmm. to eat the yogurt plain because it's too flat, you know? Yeah. So I put some, a couple of raisins, just a few. Mm -hmm. So evidently they don't have a box of raisins at the deli. So the guy that. says, listen to this, listen to this. So the guy says. I'll give you a few raisins? I'll give you a cup. And what he does is I think he opens up a granola bag that's filled with little chocolate. And you know how that granola is not really healthy. Oh, people. I know what you're saying. Yeah. So he picks out the raisins one by one. <laughs> and I think it's no. Yeah, and I think today I got some chocolate in there or something. <laughs> something weird tasting. Don't you know they sell those individual little boxes? Yes, I know. In a, like an eight pack or something? I don't know where our interns go for this. From now on, we'll get you the boxes. I know. Yeah, and I know I sound like Gary Shandling when he's complaining about his yogurt. But, you know. <laughs> you sound like you. I'm trying to be reasonable. What the hell? Just a little box of raisins where someone has to pick through them. He probably starts picking out the raisins, then starts talking to somebody. And yeah, right. Doing it by yeah, and today I had a huge <laughs> thing of raisins. I mean, half this thing was filled with raisins, and I think some of it wasn't raisins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? All right, all right, let's go back to Harlem real yes. quick and finish this tape. So, for those of you just tuning in earlier, we were talking to Stuttering John, who went up to Harlem, had problems getting out of Harlem because there's no cabs in Harlem. So, the cops had to take him back. Went up to interview black people about the OJ thing. Now, with Mark Furman, everybody's nuts up there. You know, they're like, Oh, oh this drove I told nuts. you. Wait I told you. Wait a minute. What are you saying? Yesterday, before the Mark Furman thing, they were saying? Yes. They went nuts. You'll hear on the tape. <laughs> so, we're in the middle of listening to a guy. It's a guy, and then a woman comes over, and then a Puerto it's, Rican guy. It's like a town meeting. It's like yeah. a town meeting. We have a debate going on, I think, now between the Puerto Rican guy yeah. and Yeah. Well, this man now is talking, and he says, O.J. is innocent, it's obvious, and then the Puerto Rican guy comes up and goes, Hey, man, he guilty because, see, he won't look Nicole's parents in the eye. What kind of an accent is that? I don't know. Ah. Soupy. <laughs> he won't look, he won't look uh, Nicole's parents in the eyes. So then he goes, so then, so then the guy says, no, 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 my brother. The lawyers are instructing him not to look in Nicole's parents' eyes. So he's in the middle of uh, describing that, okay? Let's bring me up to date. Okay. Again, like I said, his lawyers is tells him. He tells him. The thing about the courtroom. There's there's people in that courtroom that are artists and they're constantly watching every artists. <laughs> Man, artists. He's the guy in the business suit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't artists. know where that suit came from. <laughs> Questionable. All right. So his theory is the artists are watching OJ and they will draw a picture the of him. Uh, right. I got the Everything about the courtroom. There's there's people in that courtroom that are artists and they're constantly watching every emotion. Everything he does. If he so much as wink at somebody, he's under scrutiny at all times. You know, so he was told, now these people, his in laws, I believe that somebody must have got to them and told them, Look, your daughter's dead. There's not gonna be no more connection with this man in your family. So that means that if this man is convicted, if OJ is convicted, everybody got a lot to win. If OJ is found innocent, everybody is f But if he's convicted, <laughs> people are going to make money, including the family, the Gormans, everybody involved. The Gormans? The Gormans. Who are the Gormans? The Gormans. Oh, the Gormans. Oh, the Gormans. The Gormans, you mean, if OJ is guilty, the Gormans will make money? Yeah. I see. They look I They're lucky. This is like winning the lottery yeah. and getting their son killed. I wish, um, I wish my sons would get killed by OJ. I could use the money. <laughs> yeah. It's going to make money with book deals and all kind of stuff. But on the other hand, if he's set free, mm. everything.
everybody, including the county of Los Angeles, everybody's going to answer one way or another or have some kind of lawsuit. Okay. Anyhow, before the murder... That, that's the other thing. Everyone, everyone's got a... I'll Ricky get back Ricardo to him. Ricky Ricardo. All right, let's get back to him, Ricky. You're right. Who cares what I have to say? Ricky's better than me. Everybody, including the county of Los Angeles, everybody's going to answer one way or another or have some kind of lawsuit. But I just like how everyone's involved in these lawsuits. I take the they whole world... already see. I blame these friggin' lawyers with their 1-800 numbers and their uh, com TV commercials. Now, everybody... There will be a lawsuit involved because they accused O.J. and now O.J. is innocent. Like, you could sue over that. Oh. <laughs> Gee. I think he'd be smart to just run off to Guam, O.J. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyhow, before the murder happened, they had a lot to win if they got divorced before because they had to divide. So, what? if the family was, was uh, uh, looking for to make money with O.J., they would have told her daughter, their, their daughter, get divorced and we get some, you know, she's supposed to get the half. Okay. So, they don't have to wait until she got killed to, to try to make some money. I don't think the family, the father and the mother, are going to be waiting to make some money or okay, get something. That one fact, you, immediately, at the beginning of this conversation, <laughs> hey man, forget the DNA, forget all that, forget evidence. I don't think they're looking in each other's eyes. You know, it's like, everyone says, hey, there's no evidence to convict OJ. That's what they say. We know there's tons of evidence. And then they say, well, and anyway, look in the eyes. It's wacky logic. And then this guy, Puerto Rican guy who thinks he's guilty. <laughs> but you, know, you pointed out before, whether they think he's guilty or innocent, nobody has a good reason. No, it's wacky. Don't you see, man? If OJ was alive and, the, and the, Nicole was alive, they'd still get half his money anyway. No, they devise. They devise it. Yeah. <laughs> they they're not going to get nothing. And this is something that no matter what they do, they're, not, they're going to be always be, be in okay. pain for that that, that happened. Right, well, right. we run out of tape. What happened there? Oh. I, I I don't know. I guess that's where Gary cut it off. I see. Right, but I guess he just goes on yeah, and on. Just, yeah. <laughs> well, I was just getting I, into it. I know. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. rhythm. All right. I think there's another guy. One more guy. And then we can take some phone calls. Wait. <laughs> How about those wife beatings? Oh, well. That, that, that's oh, not uncommon in, in, in marriage, and oh. I don't I don't see where the woman really sustained any real injury. So you can, so you well, can. What do you have to have? Like <laughs> limbs missing? So you have to be dead. This ain't the last guy. This is the guy smoking a doobie. He's talking to me. Oh, <laughs> and this guy is just another guy who's. Every one of these guys says, "Hey, it's what's the big deal? He beat his wife. It's not like he killed her, but he did kill her." But, you know, they they saw those pictures of the last year is that she sustained any real injury. When I beat my woman, I certainly would sustain more injuries than this. I mean, what kind of man beats a woman like that? And... They still look fine. Yeah. Well, look at their hair. You don't want to talk on the phone. You sustain any real injury. So you can so you condone a, a slap here, here or there. Um, if the woman condones it, I can, if that's what keeps that couple together, if they can uh, deal with that situation and go on, it's all it's all right with me. Well, you know, like really what would you bad. do if you found your wife, uh, you know, uh, committing sodomy to another man? Hmm. Well, I don't know. I'd probably watch. I might. We want to take some pictures. Oh, mm. you considered it for a long time. Yeah. That's what I like. He didn't just blurt out an answer. He, I would take the pictures. <laughs> that ain't took a, a long pen. time to decide what to say. <laughs> that ain't a doubt. If she didn't bring me something good to eat, I would beat her. That's right. You asked the wrong question. <laughs> I might even take If the macaroni's pictures. cold, you get your whooping. It wasn't. <laughs> of course, O.J. was out cheating his brains out during the whole marriage, and of course they were divorced when she was having sex with the other guy. Yeah. It wouldn't send me off the deep end. I, I believe if the man, if the man didn't go and commit Harry, if the man didn't go and execute his wife and that guy, why would he execute this this, this waiter sometimes? Also, this waiter sometimes bartender, bartender in a bar where the manager, of the bar had been, the owner of the bar had been killed in a semi. Like he's saying, hey, look, OJ didn't kill anyone else, so why would he kill those two? And now listen to this. <laughs> you know, this thing is the first murder. Uh, yeah. Ron Goldman's <laughs> occupation now has yeah. something to do with you know, a bartender. <laughs> For God's sake, why would he kill a bartender? For the manor, and I've been to California. Oh, oh waiters and bartenders usually hand you off a, a little cocaine in the bathroom, you know? I mean, this is a Hollywood couple. I mean, these kind of things go on there. It's, you know, it's not the degree of jealousy that normal people have, because people have such large egos, they don't feel they can be replaced. You hear that? Marriages are a little, um, you know, interchangeable. People swing a little. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> really, man. Yeah. Why would OJ kill a bartender? I mean, out in Hollywood, everyone's doing a little coke and getting some dudes from the waiters. You don't kill a waiter or a bartender. 
like them. Hey, let's swing a little. It's a lifestyle. He said, you know what he's saying, Howard? The Hollywood egos are so big, they don't think that they're replaceable. So they wouldn't mind the guy cheating on his wife. Right. Is that what you got out of that? Yeah, no, I'm telling you. Hey, I'll buy it. <laughs> I bet you every time you play, you get... All right, let me wrap this up with our final our final thought for the uh, evening. There's one more. Oh, how you doing, sir? Yes. Yeah, uh, based on the Mark Furman tapes, you think O.J.'s innocent or guilty? He's he's innocent. First of all, f*** Mark Furman tapes. I'm going to tell you this. Any black man think he can get to kill two crackers and get away with it, it's a stupid mother... Oh. You cannot, You have a better chance, like the judge told me when I had a fight with this white guy. The judge told me I had a better chance hurting one of my own kind than him. The judge told me that he didn't kill him, and they know he didn't. They just want to rob Everybody involved with the criminal justice system. This guy's a militant, too. He's got yeah. black combat boots on, you oh, know, yeah. the, whole, the whole thing going, the hat on and stuff. Good thing he didn't kick your ass. <laughs> See, they, go, they want to put him down and make him look like a criminal and, and, and all kinds of They want to rob him in the name of the law, in other words. Because they're going to get him either anyway. Either he going to jail or he ain't going to have no more money. They're going to bankrupt him. And then after that, mark what I'm telling you now. They're going for Michael Jackson. They're going to make him divorce that girl and take all his money. Like, <laughs> or Conspiracy theory all over the place. They're going to make him divorce that girl. And take all his money. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Now see. So nobody's guilty. Jeez. Nobody. Well, that's what I told you this no. was leading to. The waiters that are guilty. <laughs> the waiters and, and the police. Coke in the bed. <laughs> Coke dealing waiters. My point is, I don't care how many bigoted or racist police there are, don't be calling the police every minute. Well, why would you if you know they are bigoted <laughs> yeah. and racist? If you know they're racist, why are you calling them every minute to break up domestic disputes and to, and to take care of crack dealers? You'd think you'd know better than to call them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're going to get him for the time of the station charges. Remember I told you that. Okay. Remember I told you that. Thank you, sir. And would you interview her? How was your letter carrying today? Well, sir, let me ask you a question. Now, i, I got to ask you one question. You seem very outspoken. What? What? How do you How do you respond to, you know, when, when they say that, you know, like a lot of blacks feel O.J.'s innocent because of the, the fact that he's black? Is that good? No, that's not the fact because we cannot, they, if, if I was fighting with, uh, all right, I'll give you an example. If I was fighting with a black guy right now and the cops came and seen it, they'll drive by. If me and him got in a fight and he wasn't winning, they'll stop and take me to jail. So what I'm saying, like I said before, we cannot kill one of you and get away with it, no matter how much money we got. <laughs> we cannot kill one of you and get away with it. Sucks. It sucks, man. Why can't we kill you? Wait a minute, wait a minute. So therefore, OJ is innocent. Don't try to analyze it. You can kill us any time y'all want and say self-defense or we try to break in your house. But he, you can't. You two Jewish people, too? You crazy? If you say hell, Hitler, the Jews get mad. So imagine that. You kill two of them? They're calling Ron and I'm Jewish. Now Jewish. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ron's Jewish. I don't know about Ron, but Nicole just turned Jewish. Yeah. She converted. Semitic and all this, but they be yelling nigga, nigga, nigga. And last night on TV, they you don't think you don't think racist cops yell about the Jews? <laughs> what do you think? If you're I racist, think to Mark Berman say there wasn't a human being yeah. on earth he liked. Yeah. Got a nerve to say in the paper. How dare them? I thought O.J. Simpson was on trial for murder for death of two people. What Mark Furman got to do with... And they act like they're so shocked that the cops be playing evidence. That's bullshit. This has been going on for 30 and 40, 50, 60 years. The cops are doing this to us. All of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, we didn't know our police do that. That's in L.A. They do worse. So you, know what I'm, you know what I'm finding? So you seem like, you know, you know, you know, you know an intelligent person here. So what I see that's I happening I is <laughs> that based on your own experience, though, what's happening is a lot of people I've been interviewing out here, based on their own experience, they're saying, hey, cops have framed people over yeah. here. So, but now how do we know that same thing happened out in Los Angeles? Because birds of a feather flock together. Oh. Ah. You know what that term means, right? Uh, <laughs> you know what that term means, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> no. You know what I'm saying? I've never, I've never heard that term. What exactly does that mean? I do ask them. Oh, okay. Uh, elaborate. The police, all of them are the same. They're all blue. As far as they're concerned, we are the enemy, and the mother are the good, and we're the bad. That's it. All cops... Uh, where you think that come from? Get on your knees now. The cops in New York now have you on your knees. When they arrest you, tell you get on your knees. I don't get on it. I take the ass whipping that. I don't get on my knees for none of the mother... Beating? Yeah, I've been... I take my ass with it. <laughs> Why is he involved with the police? Oh, but no. Yeah. <laughs> He's so involved with the police, this guy. He never gets on his knees. Yeah. Please, I don't get on it. I take the ass whipping <laughs> that. I don't get on my knees for none of them. Mother <laughs> beating? Yeah, I've been beat many a times. Many a times. I beat up some of them, too. So, but I would... Look at what this guy's involved in. Fighting with the police. <laughs> He's get, a, get, a, get a life. <laughs> Why are you involved with police constantly? Why are they in your neighborhood? Why are you in trouble with them? 
What they're going to do is see, we already had a, a racial tension, all of us, every single one of us. Every black man is a walking time bomb and a suspect and our skin is our sin. What they're going to do is they're going to cause it, whereas we're not going to be able to get them and we're going to have to get other white people. And it's f***ed up. But hey, if, if somebody have AIDS and you dying, the death penalty, I'm coming for you going to hell with me. I got but see, but they're doing it. It's not uh, no necessarily y'all people on the street. I mean, except the ones that grab their bag when I walk by on the street, and that makes me feel bad because they don't understand that if I wanted their money, I'll just take it, punch them in the face, and take it. If you grab it, but I don't take money from women. If I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna get a man. I'm a man. If I'm a man. <laughs> yeah, that's rude. Yeah. Yeah. That's hey, at least he doesn't take women's purses. That's rude. Just guys. Me, I'm, I'm holding onto my tape recorder. <laughs> you're damn right. Well, I'm gonna punch you in the face and take it. No, you're the media. <laughs> me, you're a man. <laughs> well, that's not my stocks. I know that's the, that's the conspiracy to lock us up and murder us in the name of the law. So therefore, I don't f with them. I try to do this. So you don't follow that whole stereotype? I don't rob them. No, no, no. I don't rob them, but I see, I see what they're doing. You understand what I'm saying? I see what they're doing. Right. I'm not even gonna do nothing. You know, I see what they're doing, and I, I, I scare them more. When people like me, they can think like that. That scares them because I might, I might sound the alarm and wake up other young black men. You know what, That's sir? Why. You know, you know, you seem like an intelligent guy, man. I am an intelligent guy. That's what scares them. Don't tell nobody where I live. That's why I'm giving you my name. Because once Take they care. find out, they're going to murder me. <laughs> Take care. You're right. <laughs> and that's the third time John has insulted him. Right. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you sound like a very intelligent man. I am. Don't take giving him my name because if you find out I'm Einstein, they'll kill me. You, me? you just compliment this guy. <laughs> yeah, he Let keeps him going. Let him be right, cool. right, right. <laughs> I must tell you, this is the most uh, innovative uh, conversation I've ever had because you are you are creating new thoughts. <laughs> And uh, the revolution comes, I'm not going to shoot you. That's right. But I'll well, <laughs> certainly an interesting, uh, well, it's interesting to hear what's going on in Harlem and <laughs> see how everyone's reacting to the Mark Furman tapes, and it's certainly going well. I don't think it really matters about the tapes. <laughs> no, I don't either. I don't think they're even watching you the tapes. stepped it up one step, though. <laughs> Very nice. So what did you do? Go home and change your underwear? <laughs> I, I, I washed my hands immediately. Oh, really? You're scary, yeah, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. You were scared. All right, very good. And uh, there it is. For all of you whiteies who are hiding in your homes and at work, we bring you a little here's bit. another reason. We just want you to know, here's another reason to hide in your house. <laughs> Lock the door and quickly call Sloman's home security system. All right, we'll be back right after these words.